Tai and Master Tai. Uh, in the last few minutes, I hope you enjoyed the entertainment. All these super fancy techniques that we just demonstrate for you. Unless you like Steve Seagal or Bruce Lee, these techniques probably won't save your life in a real trouble situation. What I want to do is teach you the real knowledge and know-how, how to truly save your life in a real life-threatening situations as we practice. First, we want to talk about situations and, and, and weapons, when someone has weapons and then when they try to hurt you or kill you. One of the things we need to recognize before a person hurts you, while when a person is going to be hurting you, what do you should do? So we're going to begin with the first part to understand of thinking about being a tough target to hit, hard target to hit. You know, when somebody get a gun point at you, a knife point at you, I know what I'm teaching you, you're gonna say, well, what if I freeze up? And these are the things I wanna teach you. Don't freeze up. And it's a nature to freeze up. That's why you wanna learn these reflexes and techniques. Don't hesitate, because hesitation can get you killed. What you want to do is learn and practice these simple techniques. I'm going to show it to you in the slow motions today, so you can work on it. And once you get, get inside of you, on in time of emergency, you don't have a time to think. Just remember, don't think about it. Just use your technique that you learn when a life and death situation. It's true, though. When a gun points at you, the gun barrel looks so extra big. When a knife points at you, that knife looks extra long and extra sharp. And it seems easy now, but it isn't that easy. If you don't look at gun and a knife to intimidate you, don't let that intimidate you. Remember, gun and knife can hurt. Attacker make it hurt. We must drop and stop attackers. This is the number one goal. Or avoid the close distance with attackers. Three vital areas we talk about. Sorry, you know. Three areas that we talk about. Eyes, throat, knee. These are the simple area to reach. Grab hold of me and put a knife on my. First thing people go, ah, oh, I'm in trouble. Let's see if we can switch this around. And first thing I do is go, uh, but it's not true though. See, it's a simple. This hand could be here, and this finger could be there, and he want me to see for a while. Can you see? Nothing. Nothing. Okay. And. If you can grab this, most people try to fight this. Don't fight that. Break this. See? So easy to break these things. That's why I kick the groin, because anybody can, can take a kick in the groin and still get up and chase you. But it's very hard when this knee goes down. And it, they won't be able to chase you. So, you know, be, you'd be surprised how knee does. Knees build on a certain angle. If you just do it right, it takes a few ounces of strength. So even the person's are taller than me and stronger than me, but when I do the right, on this brick, he actually shorter than me and smaller than me. That's because he be on his knee. See, he's a lot shorter than me now. So we can equalize size. And then he's hard for him to chase. So whole idea is go ahead and do the three basic areas that we teach today. Thank you. When somebody come in at you and attack you, you just give up and become an easy target for somebody to hurt you. That's the last thing in the world you want to do. You want to learn not to be an easy, simple target. So this is a, the events. When you block, you strike, you hit, you kick, you drop the person down, and it can be Bruce Lee if you want, and that's what Bruce Lee does. What I want to teach you is ordinary people. We can't afford to do that. When somebody have a knife, points up. You want to stick that hand right straight into the throat here and then take him down if you want to do that. But mainly simple practice. Practice this trick. See, come straight in like an airplane. Goes in here and go by it. So, by the way, if you happen to have a pen on your hand, you can grab the pen and can do the same thing. Makes no difference. So, see, this is a weapon. This is what's going to hurt you. And that's the advantage of person here. My advantage is this. This is a target. It doesn't matter how it works. It just works. So the whole simple technique is this cobra head strike. Just learn this and go into. 
He may practice this with a piece of paper, holding up in the ear, and by poke through the paper right along. So now, when somebody, you see somebody with a knife, pouring out, before anything happened, just learn to shoot straight out. Pretend this is the weapon. Don't let the technique intimidate you with a knife because you get killed every time, see? But as soon as somebody pick up something, you're giving something back. So vital technique versus weapon. The only weapon is a deadly, only reason weapon is a deadly, because attacker is holding it. The really only reason we are effective, no matter who you are, because you want to hit the vital area. That's why today we're going to learn three simple vital areas. You don't have to learn a lot. If you had a knife, if I can come in here and break this, then I can slowly run away if I want to, and he still won't be able to catch me because he has to do one leg hop to catch up with me. So the whole idea is, can you stop him from further? Stop the attackers. Stop the attackers. What does a knife or gun doesn't really make a difference. First, we avoid the fight. This is not about fighting. This is learning about winning. Winning a fight, you don't always fight. If you can avoid it, you can get away, the odds for you to get hurt, and it's very slim. Even though a person have a gun. It's a sure thing getting killed if somebody have a gun, so don't move or I get on your knee. If it's crazy enough to do this, it's crazy enough to kill you. I would rather take a chance turn around, half a time he can hit you anyway. Not a half a time he can hit you in a vital anywhere to kill you. And not a half a time he discour he get discouraged and he quit. He won't even shoot you. I want to take three chances, three percent of chances of getting killed, then make sure a hundred percent of the time I'm going to be hurt and be killed. So the whole idea is avoid, make it hard target to hit and tough target to hit. So what's the difference between that two? Hard target to hit, get away. If I have, if I send some part of knife, the far distance, remember, that distance, you have to fight the weapon. It's the only way you're going to get him is when he reach for a knife, you strike him in a vital area. Doesn't matter, you strike him in a vital area. If it's already pulled out and it's too late, then you got to choose to be a hard target to hit. So when I'm here, I'm a tough target. See, anybody will hurt anybody. If you act like a victim, if you act give, give, if you give up, if you give in, people make, when you make it easier for attacker, attacker will take advantage of you. What you want to do is to make it hard for him. Attacker hates that. If somebody's going to pull out a knife, he's got a knife in the back pocket, reach for the pocket, and I go like this, take some right down, guess what? It's real simple. I mean, you don't need to be expert. Watch my hand. See, just open like this and shoots right in there. Right? Doesn't matter who it is. It goes right down. Okay. Now, don't do anything yet. Okay. okay. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> All right. Now, wait. I've got you in it. Now, I'm going to grab. No! <laughs> what did you do? What, what did you do to my son? <laughs> but see, this is called ego cloth in martial art. Well, I hate it. When he, when he grabbed it. Oh! Next technique is my favorite technique. It's called ego claw. Ego claws basically work like ego. The claws. So simple. That's what it means. When we do attack, no matter what we hook, I can go straight for the neck and lock. If my hand happened to lock this way, the Adam apple, see his face? The light little contact become very effective. Danny Bonaducci. And I did an infomercial, infomercial show. In 20 years training, he didn't even know what this is. This is so simple. Someone who grab hold of you, will let you go, and first thing people do is try to fight these things. And when they grab this simple eagle claw, see, how did this go? Watch. I hook it in here, grab in here. See, it takes a very little. I grab here and lock in here. It takes the same thing. I grab in here and do this. Makes no difference where I grab. It's called ego claw. What the whole concept of this is, by the way, this area hurt that bad, the vital area hurts worse. So somebody with a the club, they're coming in to hit you, 
It's like glue, you know, it sticks. Going to where even you want sticks. And lock it. Just squeeze. Best exercise to do this is do this. I tell you, learn how to squeeze. What you do is lock the grab. See? Thumb in here, forefinger in here. And when you lock, don't close your hand, because when you close hand, he may be gone forever. So be very careful. I can lock this to the facial area and lock and lock. No matter where I lock, it takes very little. <laughs> you okay? Fine. <laughs> then, there's a lot of time people don't realize this. They try to fight people off very hard. If you grab this part back here, it takes a very, very little. He don't like this feeling, I know. This is a little soft called love handle area. When somebody choking you, grab you too tight. You grab this love handle and they quit right away. Now, you could grab this yourself and whip it in one time and see what happened. So this is called ego claw. Often somebody can grab you low. <laughs> and you can use the same ego claw to grab anywhere. Of course, you okay? Someone could be choking you with your heart. You're all the way down here. The ego claw in here, all in here. It can whip, and does the same thing. So ego claws can work against almost everywhere. But my favorite area is the neck area. So any given time, somebody could be muscling you, powering you. A simple ego claw locks immediately. See, it takes no force. It's not a force anymore, or a size. It's the vital. Remember that. When someone point a gun at you in a distant like this, you might as well think you're dead, because you're really not gonna do anything now. Well, so what kung fu gonna do for you? Probably nothing, because we're too far away. But you got the gun down again. One of the things I learned about winning a fight without fighting, first we should try to avoid this situation never happen. But if somebody's going for the gun, reach, and we need an immediate encounter and strike our opponents at the same time. Now, I want to explain to you. By the time this gun picks us up, this far away, it's called this distance. I recommend you do one thing. Give up anything except your life. So that's what this self-defense is all about. Don't give up your life. If he wants the wallet, he wants anything, do give it to him. But you know, sometimes in the real situations that people are crazy enough to point a gun at you, and he's crazy enough to shoot you and kill you. One of the things I want to explain these things today may save your life if you pay attention and practice this. When someone point a gun at you, half the time they cannot hit you and shoot straight. So one of the things I do is because he's, he probably will kill me. He is going to kill me. And now to stand there and give up and say, shoot. Well, that means giving up your life. But if you take off, do run. Half a time, person cannot shoot straight anyway. And that takes 50% of the chances away from you. That's called hard, hard target to hit. Second, as you run in zigzag, and not a 50% of chance, he can hit you at all. So now he got 25%. He's got 25% of chance to hit you. The next things are even better yet, because when you're moving around, half the time you cannot hit the vital area. He can kill you. So now you're down to 12 and a half percent a chance he can kill you. As you're running further and moving, well, half the time they're probably just not gonna proceed. Now you got six and a half percent a chance he's gonna shoot you. But if he did decide to shoot you by then, it's worse for his target. Another half a chance, maybe you may get shot or get killed. 3% of the time. But if you do nothing and just stand there and accept this, your chances are odds 100% getting killed. So what it is what I'm saying is, learn to be a hard target to hit. So now I'm going to explain that, this about how this works. First, back up just a little bit. As the person points a gun at you and tells you, don't move, please, you have an option. Can you sense it? This person just wants something. If he does, give it to him. If you know person's going to kill you, do turn and go and turn zigzags in the running as fast as you can. Because now, remember, the whole idea is to protect your life and save your life. Today, we're not teaching you how to fight. We teach you how to run. 
Now, that's called being a hard target to hit. Next thing I want to talk about is called tough target to hit. What makes a tough target? Here, when a person hit a gun, you know, lock it up, and this person, you know he's got a gun. And he's coming at you, like it told me. And he's going to be intimidated. I don't know if he's going to kill me or not. That's why our philosophy is to say the best, best way to win a fight is don't fight at all. Or end the fight before the fight. So as he come up, I see the gun. Don't wait and see. That's what most people do. Wait and see if he pull out a gun and he do this. Or pull out a knife. We're going to talk about light knife in a little while. And as he comes up, first thing I want to make you understand. Gun is deadly. One deals our attacker holding it. Without a person holding this gun, this gun is only a weapon. It does not do a thing. But to equalize, when you let the gun intimidate you and say, oh, I got to fight the gun, you never win fighting against a weapon. So we never want to fight against a weapon. I'm going to teach you the simple philosophy how to really protect your life. Put it back. That gun can shoot you and can kill you. But remember, to equalize is a vital area in the human body. We call vital defense, vital technique defense. And this is where the real ability comes in. Before this guy reach for his gun, I want to hit him in the vital. When I hit him in the vital, he got to go out just like anything else. See, as, I did, as, a, as a student and as you're learning over there, I want you to take your hand for a minute and put it in a, in a hand like this. By the way, it doesn't have to be a hand. It could be a pen. It could be a videotape, anything, and it makes no difference. Key is a strike in the vital area. If I strike this area, see how light I hit? Does not matter how hard you hit, it doesn't have to hit hard. Now, so I'm going to teach you the technique, just straight attack. Pull out your gun. Pow! Don't ever give them a chance to pull out your gun. Don't ever let them have a chance to pull out your weapon. Because when they pull out a weapon, you're fighting weapons. Only per time this weapon could be deadly is what? There's an attacker, someone holding it, trying to hurt you. What's your problem? Your problem is not the gun, it's the attacker. Now, these are the, the techniques we teach in our, in our, in our self-defense, and you know, protect, protect yourself. One of the things, there's three philosophies I believe in. One, shoot. If you strike, a person can't see. If a person can't see, he cannot focus too, too good. Usually, they cannot shoot straight when they can see. So one of the areas that I would strike immediately is striking with a double dragon in the eye. When I do this, what I would do is usually practice on a piece of paper and go right to penetrate. Don't worry about it. Don't just pick it up and just move. As soon as you move, you move right through in, into it. Pick up the gun. Get, get yourself ready. Pick up the gun. He can pick up the guns fast, slow, then you can put your hand up there. But remember, if he gets the weapon, attacker is the violence. Number one, next thing, equalize this, vital area is the violence. So strike the vital area is very, very important. That's the only equalizer we have. Put in a knife position in fighting. Most people do is have a knife on the hand, and they're looking at the knife, and they're worried to death by this knife. Well, remember, let's go back. If I run, he probably leave me alone, but he may chase me, and I have an option. Uh, when he come around, put, put a knife right there. Right. Now, you see the knife over there? Pick it up and use it. Before a person pick it up and use it, you do want to go ahead and damage your opponent right away. You don't want to wait till they pick up the knife and hurt you. So any given time, before weapons are drawn, try not to fight a weapon. Stop the fighter first. But here, got it up. There's a knife. It's going to attack you. Attack. You can act like a Steve Seagal and do this. But you know what? This is not going to work. For average people, never learn martial arts. What I think it works most effective, get the knife up. First thing I see in the knife, I immediately go for the knee joint. This is called simple stepping front kick. Forget about this, it's going to st stab you. If you get this foot in there first, and 
drop it in your first, this thing is not going to come. And what happened is, if I turn around and go, he only got one leg. He's going to have to hop to chase me. And I think it's going to take him longer to hop and chase me than me can get away. Remember, safety is most important. You don't want to be a hero. You don't want to be an expert. You may, may be a small person like me. You may be uh, a little older, and you move, might move a little slower, but it's okay. Because when he drop this kick, when he walk slower, he still have trouble hopping and catch up with you. So remember, it's not the knife that we fight. It's the attackers that we drop that's more important. Drop your attacker first. Okay, now I want to show you some real life situations. When a gun point, knife points you from different angles and different positions. How do you make the true decisions? When to move, when not, not to move. And the right move to make. Let's start out with, um, Jeff, would you come up here with a knife? Remember, and destination is very, very important. Point a knife at me like if you were really involved in fighting. Okay. Now, if I'm this far away, really, these, if you were an expert, then you need to wrap around your shirts and you get involved in fighting. But truly, if you can be that far away, unfortunately, sometimes we don't have any room to go. And we might be in a dead end. Then that's forcing you to protect yourself. But if we have room to move, let's get out of the way. What happened if a knife here and the person said, don't move? Don't move. Okay. Uh, this close, tell me no move, I think he's in trouble. Because, see, and the f one thing we want to do is actually move from here and turn our body out of the way. See, when, my, when I turn like this, even if he stabbed, my body is automatically out of the way. So don't move inside into the knife because you can get actually cut and stabbed. But this is a good wrench. Anytime when somebody have a knife in here or a gun this close, which probably they don't happen, not unless they make a fast swing, and then you have to block and move. Swing to my face, then you got to block and move. So remember to move outside, away from the enemy, away from the weapons. And when the weapons are attack, remember the very simple shot. It's really easy. You can come from here, you can come from there. It doesn't matter which way you come from. Because however the way you do it, it's always into the vital area. So when you get this close, that's no problem anymore. Then the, the gun's over here. Actually, if you would get a real advance by a little simple like this, arm is broken and knives fall off. But let me give my enemy back the knife. What happened if this person come from behind and put you on the, the neck? Put the knife on the neck. Here. Now, if you tell you no move, you're actually, actually smart because if you move forward, you probably get just a cut. So you don't want to move. But what happened from this point on? If I get, I got to make a decision. This guy really going to come in and slice me? If he is, I have to do something. If he's not, it's just going to make me walk. I'm going to need some time to protect myself. But any given time, when somebody do this to you, one of the things is, see here? You want to reach your hand over and be able to lock this control of this part of your hand. Cut me. See? He can't cut. So you want to lock this for a second and turn around and help himself for a minute. See? By turn like this, you can help him stab him. So a simple movement from lock and relax and do this, and the knife goes right strictly to himself. So knife can hurt you, you can help him hurt himself. It's very easy to hurt himself. Third, yes, if a knife was already here, and the points are on your back and said don't move. Well, unless you know how to grab your right, you don't move. But remember, the smartest way to do it is not move into it and see what happened here. If you can, if you have to, by turning outside, turn your body outside, slow motion. By turning your body outside, you would automatically get raw right away, back on the, uh, which technique is that? Tiger claw. Eagle. Eagle claw. <laughs> okay. Knife comes straight, people slice down, First thing most people do is call blocking. Try again. Blocking. 
this is not the correct thing to do because actually you can get cut up. See, you can get cut up very bad. But if somebody come in and do that, kick the kneecaps. Stay away from them, kick the kneecaps. Kick the kneecap and run if you have to. But the whole idea is not to fight the weapon. Never fight weapon this way because it could be very deadly. Do it again, slice. I might be able to roll out of the way and then move in and do this. So the whole concept is don't fight the weapon. Let it miss, then move in. Next thing I want, next one I want to demonstrate, my son Kenny, and he is going to come up and demonstrate the gun technique with Kenny. Would you come up with a gun? Now, remember, the gun pointing in many, many situations. First thing, see somebody just did that, and I stand there and wait for it. Do it again, would you please? Anytime you know you want to avoid the confrontations, the potential situations, so try to avoid these situations first. But if you see, one of the things we have what we call six instincts, we can sense the violence that people have. The minute you can sense this and you go, oh no, he's getting a gun, guess what? It's too late. But you do that again, which for your gun, I'm going to take off. When I'm gone, his gun might not even pull out yet. So I'm not teaching you to be a coward. I'm teaching you to really learn to protect your life. Because your life is a very serious matter. No matter what anybody thinks, you only got one life to live. We only, I know we're only here so long, but we can stay here as long as we want. By learn to be smart on the street or in the real situations. Next thing we got to talk about, it's too late. Somebody hit the gun, and you're walking by the street, and you pull your gun first, and the guy said, don't move. Well, that's kind of far. Now, here is the difference. The guy's got a gun here, and I'm going to look at this guy. What you would you want? My life? Remember, you can give up anything. Watch, ring, give it to him. But don't give up your life. So the first thing to learn is be calm for a second. Think about it. How can I calm this person down so he don't use a gun for a split second? But if this man is your enemy, that you hurt his family, or you did something to him, and he's seen this guy come up with a gun to revenge, first thing I want you to do is not sit there and decide. I wonder if he's going to do this turn around and go. Take off. The life you saved could be yours. Now, that's assuming we didn't know that. We know the guy probably going to rob you. You probably have a problem. And his hands this close. Now, that's a good gun fighting right here. The person puts the guns very close to his body so he cannot reach him. Okay, so we know he, he is expert. But when we are this close, remember, never turn in and fight it. Attack. Simple thing to do is to drop and grab the gun, gun handle. See, grabbing here and pushing it down is one of the things. But remember, don't fight and struggle for the gun. Because by the time you get free, you still probably could shoot you. What we want to do is, since you do that, you might want to go right into, immediately, run the throat and shoot right into there. Remember, as I said, when they can't see, they can focus. The idea is, this is only temporary overcoming. This is something you have to go in and do. Now let's do a slow motion for a second. Put the gun here. First thing is, we have to turn the body away from it. As we did that, watch how my hand move at the same time. So automatically, I get double defense. One, I push the gun away. Two, I'm no longer there. When you put the double movement in there, a body automatically defends itself for a second. But since you do that, it's a natural reflex, the hand has to come out. Whether through the neck, Will I do it? Oh, to the eyes. Oh, very simple. Since we turn this, break this immediately. And then, of course, you can help him a little bit and let him shoot himself. But remember that. Got here, turn, let the thing turn. You got one hand here, turn here, and strike immediately. Remember, things happen in split seconds so fast. We need to react to that. Second, what if a person's on the back of you? Like this. You, your hands up, and you're thinking, this person's really going to kill you. And he's just going to talk to you for a second, and he's going to kill you. One other thing I would recommend is to do is react. Don't wait. First, if you want to run, you can. Remember when you run? You want to run zigzags. 
harder for him to shoot, even if he hits you. Your arts are living, it's very, very much better. If you get down on your knee, and the guy says, get down on your knee, and, and, and close your eyes, and he puts a hand on your gun, well, then what you do? You're giving up. Don't give up. Like I said, you can give up anything, but don't give up your life. Here, do it again. Always turn outside. By dropping one hand, and immediately the, the gun points the other way, eagle claw through the throat. If you have to. From here, remember, see? Turn in slow motions. The gun's already pointing different ways. Eagle claw through the throat, if you have to. But remember, this got to be so fast, otherwise this gun, he can still point back at you. Another thing you could do is, when you turn this, do help him by pointing at him. Remember, you got two hands now. Did you turn? You use both hands. One hand, grab this, another hand point, and let him point at him, himself real quick, and he might just pull the trigger by accident. <clears throat> Often when you're walking, see, he's making you walk. He says, since you walk, especially take that left step. Since the left steps walk, you turn with him. Walk the right, walk the left. So if he's a right-handed, let's say if he's a left-handed, walk the left, walk the right, and turn. It's the opposite. See, the minute you walk, you shift it out of the focus right away. And since you shift out of focus, use the right hand. Walk the left, you're actually in a perfect position to do anything you, you like to do. Gun pointing at me, in my head. Somebody's crazy enough to point a gun in your head and take no move, because you're probably gonna blow your way. And uh, probably the dumbest thing he can do, the most dead and dangerous moment. Because when you look at that gun, the barrel is really, really big. So what we need to do, so remember, if this close, see, he can't move, he said bang when I move, bang. Too late. What happened is, you actually can always move before a person can say bang or pull a trigger. What you want to do is turn them with it. Again, the minute you turn them with it, because you're so close, you need to get close right away. And use a tiger claw, I mean eagle claw, into the throat. Grab the, the Adam apple here, right inside. When his both finger touches it, he automatically drops for good. If you are here, you can go ahead and drop the knee accidentally and break the leg at the same time. Oh, when you lock this, you can go ahead and take him down. There he has a very, uh, very serious uh, technique. Put it up here in front. This is a good technique I like to do. When you use your hand right in here, it doesn't move pretty fast. Then gun out the mic and knocks out a hand. I did it again. Okay, gun in right in here. Remember what I just told you, make a turn. As I make turn, the hand's right here. But I help him right here a little bit. So, turns right in there. Very simple. If you hit real hard, you break the nerve system in here, and the hand, the gun automatically turns back. Of course, this gun can accidentally automatically misfire when you turn it real fast. See? But what I really would do is I'll grab this out of the way, really, and try to turn it as much as, I, as quick as I can, and go for vital areas as soon as I can. Okay. Thank you, Skinny. These are the things that I would like to have you remember. The information and knowledge that can save your life besides the physical defense and mental defense. These are the things called don'ts and do's. Let me suggest, first thing you do, you do not do. You don't freeze up. You can't protect yourself if you cannot move or think. Second, don't give up life. It's very precious. We only have one. So you know, you not get a second chance. So don't give up your life. Don't hold your breath and hope they will go away. You have to do something. If you don't know what to do, you're in trouble. So learn to do something. Don't say, I can't. Don't be afraid to face that, the fear. It's it just not going to go away. Just, just face it if you know you're going to get hurt. Don't beg for mercies when someone says they are going to, to really kill you. When someone 
put a gun on your head and tell you to get you on your knees. Chances are they are crazy enough to put a gun on your head, they're crazy enough to shoot you. <laughs> so don't give up. Don't fight. If you don't have to, the risks are not worth it. For watch a ring or water or, or something you can replace, give it to them. But do fight for your life. Do stay calm. Panicking in a dangerous situation may only make it worse. Realize that you action or lack of the, the action could determine the outcome of your problem. Switch from victim thinking. Don't think like a victim. You might have to think aggressive when you know you're going to get hurt. You cannot win if you are afraid to even try. Attack the person, not weapon. Treat a weapon as an extension of the atta attacker's arm only. Win the fight by using the don't fight philosophy. Don't fight. Win. Don't abuse things I teach you unless they're for real situations. And when in the real situations, today I'm not teaching you how to fight. I'm teaching you how to protect yourself. This technique, as vital as they are, they're only effective, and they're more effective than the weapon. So sometimes you really want to learn not to fight the weapons, but use the vital techniques. And these techniques are not for playing, and not for trying out, when you, but you do need to practice. I recommend paper as a good target area to practice. Go and do paper. Remember, it's not how hard you hit, it's a penetrating. Since you can learn your technique to penetrate through this paperwork, these paper demonstrations and practices, your technique will become second nature for you. Second, you don't need to learn all the fascinating, fancy techniques. Because see, the simpler the technique, the easier the technique, the quicker the technique, the effective the techniques. So, and don't want to remember a lot. You don't want to learn a lot. See, if one or two techniques is not going to work for you, 5,000 neck technique will get you killed. So the whole idea is to learn one, two, three simple techniques and practice this three simple technique. You, you may not be in a tip-top shape, you may not be so flexible, but these three techniques is made for anybody. Whether you, you, you're small, you're, shape, you're strong, you're weak, it makes no difference. These techniques are designed and based on vital areas, quick simple movements, and instinct, instantly drop down techniques. All these techniques that we learned today it can be protect, well protect yourself against any weapon. Club, gun, knife, short, long. Remember, today we didn't learn to fight against weapons. We learned to protect against a weapon by handle your attackers the right way, or strike your attacker the right way. And weapons makes no difference. Don't let the weapon intimidate you. Remember, the equalizer for the weapon is a vital area. That's what we practice today. Practice on the vital areas if you can reach the vital area so quick, weapons has no owner. Without owner a weapon, without attacker holding a weapon, weapon no longer be deadly to you. I want to thank all these people here. Tim Wright is one of my chief instructors at our school, and I want to thank him for being here. Dino is my other son. He's been training with me for 10 years, 15 years. He's been since, since this little boy. And you know, with his help today, I really appreciate it. Kenny, my son, well, I've been beating on him since, no, I've been teaching him since he's a little kid. And he's really gotten to be real good now. Jeff and Matt, they both are my assistant instructors. Today I use them as a, my practice partner, and I hope you can learn a lot from this tape. And there's more techniques come and more program will be available in the future for more events. I hope you stay with us. Thanks, bye-bye. Practice makes perfect.